Well, here I am at 36 Riverfront Drive in Venice, Florida, with the owners, Mark and Deborah. Are you excited? Very excited. You're like a radio personality now. <laughs> now, don't get too far away from that microphone, though. See how close I am to mine? Yes. Okay. All right. That's important. And Mark, you're an old podcast veteran, along with being another kind of veteran, too. Yeah, I guess so. Well, we, we appreciate that. And that, you know, I'm going to give that podcast a plug for you. I haven't listened to it yet. But what was the name of that podcast that, that you shared with me? It was called Straight Out of Combat. So I'm going to try and remember to put a link to that in the uh, the show notes so that as people find this podcast, they can actually go down and click on that podcast. There will certainly be a good amount of people interested in that topic. So here we are. We're talking about selling your house that you have owned for how many years, Deborah? 21 years. Dang. It's a long time. It is a long time. We loved every year of it, wow. every moment of it. But but why why sell? That's a very good question. It's time. We have loved this house for so many different reasons. It's been a great place for us to have and be able to take care of so much of our family and ourselves. But now we're just at a different point in our life. We have our first granddaughter and we're ready to do something a little bit different to downsize and we're excited about that. Right. Well, and I get a lot of that. You know, a, a lot of times people ask me, you know, why are they selling or why are so many people selling? There's always been a lot of houses for sale in Venice. And it's because people's lives change. Exactly. And your desired or needed lifestyle changes. You know, a lot of times people raise a family in a large house. And then when it's just them, and like you said, you know, well, I have grandkids now, but the grandkids aren't at the house all the time. And right. so to have less to take care of and be able to spend more time with the grandkids is what a lot of people end up doing. And then there's the times where, you know, people start off and they're just a young couple. They buy a two bedroom house because it's all they could afford at the time. And now they've got three kids. And so now they need something bigger. And so just as life changes, we get these opportunities to buy beautiful houses like this. Exactly. And the question to Mark is, how do you feel about all this? Good. I'm ready. We, we started off in the little one bedroom house that we have here. That's now we call it our guest house. And we built that over a car plus garage that we instantly turned into a wood shop because that was part of my business. Then we ended up uh, adopting our son and we thought, you know, we needed a room for him, not just living in the shop. We thought maybe we'd adopt more kids. So we built a, a much bigger house, kind of attached it by the porches and the roof to the to our original house, but now it's just the two of us, and it's a it's a lot of two houses. This house we're in now is three stories, and we're like, you know, maybe it's just time to downsize and enjoy some of the other things in life. Although we will probably miss this greatly. Who knows? Maybe somebody will buy it, and there'll be such nice people that they want to invite you guys over for a barbecue or to go kayaking and fishing. That would be wonderful. Right? You never know. Yeah. It's just going to be exciting to see that whoever buys it enjoys it as much as we have. Mark hit on something uh, just briefly, the fact that you guys built this house, and you started off with one house, and now you have two. So it's always excellent for me to be able to speak with the builders because you guys know more about this house than anybody ever could mm -hmm. and you know it, it's different when somebody just buys a house from a builder right they don't know the details they don't know why certain things were done and whatnot but you guys have information we're going to talk about as much of it as you care to talk about right now and it will likely be too much and get boring at points i'll edit that stuff out okay Deborah, when you first saw this lot, right, because there was no house on it. Correct. Tell me about that day. Gosh, I remember it just like it was yesterday. Mark was very excited to share with me that he found a lot that was for sale in such a unique area. And I remember coming out here, we were in his Jeep and we stood on the roof or the bars, if you will, on the top of the Jeep so we, Jeep, so we could see the view and what that would look like. And from there, we just really started planning what our next steps would be. We knew immediately, both of us, that this is where we wanted to have our home. And so we got in contact with a engineer, Don Foley, who takes care of nothing but Key West style houses. And we met with him and talked through what we were really wanting in the house. 
he actually came out to the property with us to see how to accommodate the best, the best views and fulfill everything that we were wanting. And it just became more and more exciting to see our dreams come to fruition. And so from the start of a for sale sign to looking at the property to really investing in making this our, our home to where we are now, it's just been an amazing, blessed journey. Wow. And it's cool that it's it's like that's a video in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was just all, it was uh, unpaved roads out here at the time that was just like the, the roads were made out of the crushed shell. And uh, so it was very, it looked like we were driving into a campground. Well, it still feels like the country out here. In fact, doesn't the sign say Mayaka country as you're driving yep. in here? Yep, it does. It. And we're sitting right on the Mayaka River, which is just glorious. And then we're surrounded by the Mayaka State Forest. So we're so submersed into nature. It's just every day is beautiful. And when people think of Venice, they don't think of this. They, they don't. They don't no. know things like this exist. Well, there's probably not a lot of it. There's not. It's amazing. So many people that come out to either deliver something or to see us always, always comment. I never knew this was back here. This is a little bit of paradise that nobody's aware of. And it is. Well, we're going to make them aware of it now. That's right. Yeah. So when you built the first house, did you foresee building a second house at some point? Yes, we did. We actually submitted the like basic plan or a drawing that that small house was going to eventually connect to this house. And that's why the county allowed us to build so close to the river. It's because we got caught in between the setbacks. We went from a 35-foot setback to a 50 foot setback. And so if you see like we're a little closer than like the neighbor directly to the north of us, that's because we were, the county allowed us, thankfully our architect had the forethought of drawing this house out and how it was gonna marry to the guest house and, and had us submit that to the county. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. And I didn't know what the answer was gonna be when I asked it because so many times an addition is an afterthought and it's, this was not. it's not done as well as it could have been had they planned it from the beginning. Yeah, our designer was amazing. We provided him a detailed list of everything we were wanting, the plan, and he was able to design both houses at the same time. We were able to submit everything at the same time to the county, and this was just the plan. Worked with the designer, and we also worked with a couple builders. We didn't we didn't pull our own permits and do you know we had uh, a contractors help us. We but I did um, almost all the finish work on both houses because that's your trade. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But you didn't pour the concrete or put in the septic tank. Right. No. Right. Yeah. No. I didn't. No. <laughs> no. And quite honestly, I would have nobody else have done the trim work because Mark is so good at what he does. Oh, I know. Nobody else would would meet my standard, and we just wanted it customized a very certain way to depict a Key West style house, and he's just done an amazing job. Yeah. At it. Well, it's a lot easier to tell your husband, "Hey, do that again." Yes. <laughs> I changed my mind. Yes. Yes. <laughs> The list is never ending. So. Yeah. I'd like to see what it looks like with the kitchen on the other side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was yeah. fun, too. When we built the, the big house, we were living in the guest house at the time. So every day I was able to walk over to the guest house and make notes to the gentleman that we're working on it the next day of things that I had questions on or wanted to see differently. And, of course, our contractor was out all the time or our builder was out all the time to talk to as well. So what were some of your priorities as you were having this house designed? And actually, you should each answer that question because you probably had some different priorities. So, Mark, what was important to you? The widow's watch was one of them. We always talked about having a style house with a widow's watch that you go up to an actual room. So we have a room up there, and it's served a bunch of different purposes. It was first our office, our home office, and then um, it's been sort of a guest bedroom, although there's no bathroom up there. Now it's a gym. For me, I would say three different things, porches, kitchen, and view. Right. So when you're on a piece of property like we are, you have to be able to see the view. But what I realize is the view is more than just the river. It's the forest around us all of the trees, the nature, the kitchen. I love to cook. I love to bake. We love to host events where our family comes over, our friends come over, and, and you have to have the space to be able to do that. So the kitchen is the heart of our home, but it's so connected 
with the rest of it. And the porches, I just love the porches. So you can be at any particular part of the house, whether it's from the guest house to the front to the back. Um, it's all connected by porches and you can access the house any which direction from them. So that was what it was for me, really just being where all of our family and friends could be. And then having the heart of the kitchen opening up the rest of the house to where we can see nature and just everything around us, if that makes sense. Oh, it makes total sense. And as you're saying that, I'm realizing that the majority of houses that I am in that were built at this time uh, do not have this open up a floor plan. Mm. They were still doing mostly closed in dining rooms or sectioned off dining rooms, at least. A lot of kitchens were like that then, too. Yeah. And so, I mean, you guys were ahead of your time as far as your design goes on this. Yeah. And I'm sure that's one of the things that people will appreciate as soon as they walk in the front door. We hope so. Yeah, I'm sure they will. So the first house that you built, which you were living in until the second house, what type of use did that have after you moved out of it? Once you had the big house and, and this was your primary, what, what have been some of the benefits of having that second house? Oh my gosh, it has been so amazing. We have been able to take care of, help, support some of our family and friends. My sister has lived in that guest house. Our dear friend lived in that guest house. Mark's mother and father lived in our guest house. We've had friends come into town. We've had people we don't necessarily know, but know through friends that have been able to use that house. We've just used it in so many different ways. We've used it as a vacation rental as well and, and made some extra money on that doing that it's come in handy in so many ways we had a family tragedy one time we just turned it into a vacation rental this goes back to 2007 fortunately it was just a vacation rental we, we had some first customers were from canada they came down and loved it because i got they can go f canoeing and fishing and kayaking whatever and then we had a family tragedy we had an accident so needless to say we had all sorts of people coming in we and, and and one of the people in the accident died so we had family coming in from all over for just to see the family that was still injured in the hospital we had a funeral so it was such a blessing because the canadians they just moved out you know, they were only here for a week, so they just were leaving as we really needed it. So we kept it available for months and were able to use it. It was a, it was definitely a blessing to have. Yes. Yeah, and then I think when, uh, when I first met you guys years ago, somebody's parents were living in there too, right? Mark's parents. Yeah. Yeah, you sold their house, and then we had them, we moved them into here. That's exactly That's right. Exactly yes. what happened. I remember that. Yeah. Yes. And that worked out very well for a long time. It yeah. Did. My dad had Alzheimer's and he was getting worse and worse. So it was really great to have them so close by so we could help out, which I had to do so many times. And dad ended up passing away and my mom got remarried. She moved to Punta Gorda and it's available again. So we. Now's your chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about the lifestyle that's afforded to you here. What are some of the things you like just about being able to live in this area with what surrounds you outside? Oh my goodness. I think if you were to ask Mark and I, and you will, separately we have different things. For me, fall, winter, and spring, it's just absolutely glorious in terms of the weather, how it feels, having all the windows and the doors open, just the cool breezes that go through, just being able to sit in solitude, relax and enjoy the nature. Um, sometimes there's dolphins, sometimes there's manatee. There's just so much peace and quiet and just beautifulness. I just, I just absolutely love it. Now, Mark will tell you what he loves. Well, I love to go fishing. There's also hog hunting out here in the state forest that surrounds us. When the weather's nice, it's just magical out here that you can walk through the state forest. You can walk through all the, the dried up marshes and there's um, miles and miles of trails. There's also specifically a mountain biking trail out there um, that, a, that the mountain biking club comes and maintains quite often. And then there's just endless water opportunities because the Mayaka River connects to Charlotte Harbor and then from there out to the Gulf of Mexico. So I only have to go a few hundred yards away from the house, if that, to just catch all sorts of snook and redfish and, and the winter spotted sea trout. 
So I, I know you have sent me that one picture where you're out there and your house is way in the background. Yep. So I'm saying right now that this is the picture that's on the video. So as you see that fish in the picture looking straight beyond that is actually the house that we're sitting in podcasting in right now. Yes. Yep. That's right. So there's one really awesome, beautiful campsite that's right on the river that we've camped at um, back when my son was young and him and his friends and a youth group from our church, we would take him out there camping all the time. We canoe there from here or, or kayak or take the John boat. And it's just um, probably about three quarters of a mile down river. Now you can see the, the dock from here. The access to the state forest, the public access, the closest one is off East River Road, which you drive right by as you're coming into the coming to here. There's a gate right here. So we always have a year round pass to get in there. If I'm going to mountain bike, I'll throw my mountain bike over the gate right here at the end of this road, which is a stones from, from where we're sitting, or I'll just climb over it and go hiking or whatever. More nature than you know what to do with, right? Oh yes. It's, it's wonderful. And the birds, I have to say, I, I so enjoy all of the birds, whether it's eagles or osprey, woodpeckers. There's so many different birds that we see every single morning. And to hear them and to see them, it's just, it's really neat. Yeah, this is quite a birder's paradise. I mean, I wasn't into it as much when I was younger, but as I get older, I started appreciating stuff like that more. I can just set up a camera right here in the back porch and take all sorts of great pictures. I don't know if it's as much age or just our wives, because <laughs> my wife is very much a bird person as well. Uh, we have oh, okay. we have parakeets now, and we've had for the last couple of years. I'm amazed at how connected she is to those birds, and she's just always loved birds, and I could always, okay, that's nice, that's nice. I'm actually learning or adopting more of a... Uh, a bird appreciation. A bird appreciation, yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you. So as you're looking out the French glass doors here, because we're just for the people who can't see us, we're sitting at your dining room table, and we're looking through the French glass door. Describe what is out there who owns what and what the possibilities are of anything being changed out there. Go for it, Mark. Okay. When you look out our back window, you see what a wide span of water that leads to what looks like the bank full of mangroves on the other side. But what you're actually looking at is an island. It's a big uh, conglomerate of mangrove islands that you can go around and then there's more river um, that's that's straight out, but straight out down at a little bit of an angle, you can see for miles downriver as it goes down towards into Charlotte County there. Straight across, when you look at the really tall trees that are way out in the distance, that's actually the other bank. Kind of straight across towards the right, which is probably, you know, a mile and a half, two miles. You can barely see some houses there, but if you look kind of straight across and up to your left, as far as you can see, going north on the river, that's all protected. That's all part of the big protection zone that the state and the counties have provided for the Mayaka River. So that's that's part of the Mayaka State Forest slash some kind of Charlotte County preserve thing that they did, they, that they got together. So all the way up to, if you're familiar with the area from here, all the way up to the Mayakahatchee Creek, straight across river is protected. So you're never going to have any houses or condos unless they, for whatever reason, unprotect that. Wow. Yeah. See, I never would have known all that. I look out there and I see a kayakers or fisherman's dream, which is probably also true. It is. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Does anybody ever like water ski or tube out there? Could you do that or jet ski? Yeah, our neighbors um, just right up the road, uh, great people. I think between the two of them, they have like seven kids. And it's just a blast watching them go out there and have fun. They, they're either on their jet skis or they're, you know, they do jump in and out of the water, but they're Florida boys like me. So they're not afraid of the alligators. We don't feed the alligators. They're real shy around here. We see people tube, jet ski, water ski. Fish, lots of fishing. Yep. And if you're into hunting, the alligator hunters come show up once in a while, come up this way, you'll see them out out there a lot of water activity pretty much whatever you want to do most people are fishing we've kind of befriended a fishing guide that actually is, picks our clients up from our vacation rental right from the dock and takes them fishing yeah that seems like a good perk of being here it is i love to see all the kayakers there's certain times of the year where you'll just see a gathering if you will of kayakers go by and then one time a year we have one of the housing communities that's on the mayaka river and they must have their annual meeting down by the dock because they have, I would say, maybe 30, 40 
pontoon boats that go by, and it's always fun to see that parade of pontoon boats. So, so there's just so much going on on the river. Now, a lot of people that move to Venice, they're moving to Venice partially because they want to be near, you know, historic downtown Venice or Venice Beach, things like that. Have you found that to be an active part of your life throughout the years? I mean, we were just at Venice Beach just this last weekend with our granddaughter. And, oh, wow. Well, okay. But pretty soon, and you can see him at the end of this road, if you cross River Road, you see where all that burning and clearing's going on. That that road's going to go all the way down to my, Minnesota Beach. Right. So that's going through Welland Park and yes. giving you a direct route to Minnesota Beach, which is probably the closest beach anyway, right? Yeah. Right. So this might turn you, it might turn a 20 minute drive to the beach into a 10 or 12 minute drive to the beach. Exactly. And it's also, I've, I've noticed, you know, as we're kind of like fishing around for other houses, looking at other houses we might be able to possibly buy after we sell here, they're all advertising, whether they're in Welland Park or not, how far away they are from the new downtown Welland Park. And that's, I guess, a big thing coming up. It is. It's a very big thing coming yeah. up. And we're only a few minutes, and once they complete that road that goes to Minnesota Beach, that road's going to have a turnoff that's going to go right into Welland Park there. So we're, you're only f- a few minutes away. Yeah, one of the cool new things about buying here or living here is that, you know, a historic downtown Venice has just always been a draw, right? But now we've got this classic neighborhood, almost feels like leave it to beaver type stuff. But then 10, 15 minutes away, we have the brand new state-of-the-art downtown area. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. I will share with you downtown Venice. What I really like about it is the farmer's market. I like the shopping and there's some really good restaurants. So I guess I never really think about how long it takes me to get there because sometimes there's other stops along the way. There's so much in between here and there that it it keeps you occupied. But as far as Wallen Park, I think about the baseball stadium. Right. And then I think about this new, is it a lake? The lake that they're building? Yeah, there's like, I think it's an 80 acre lake or something. Yeah, they're building that big lake right there that they can do a boardwalk around and do all the restaurants around there and you can kayak out of there. Yep. And to me, I'm, you know, I look at the drawings you're, and, and it just reminds me of downtown Disney back in the day. Yes, exactly. You know, I mean, and all the it. shops that are going to be going in, the kayaking, the trails, you can bike, you can hike, you can walk. There's so much to do in the, the restaurants that are going in. It's really been amazing this last couple of years to see the progress that, that we have seen with it. Yeah. And that is like five, six minutes away from here. Oh, it's so I close. Mean, in this really close. A, across the way, it's going to be the back entrance. Right. So once this back entrance is, is open, it's going to be even closer. Now, they're building houses. I mean, they're stacking them on top of each other in there. Mm -hmm. And I've sold, you know, a lot of homes in there to people, and they're thrilled to be there because it is so close to everything. But you're just as close as some of the people that I've sold those houses to that have neighbor on top of neighbor and, you know, a a tiny drop of water for a pond behind them as opposed to what you have here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for the people who want to live by that, but want to live like this, this is a unique opportunity. This right. is yeah, very yeah. unique. Go ahead. Feels like you're out in the middle of nowhere, just a few minutes away from yeah. Welland Park. Yeah. So secluded, but yet so close to so much. And when I think about being out here, you're not on top of anyone else in regards to your property and et cetera. And there's just so much to see. And just it's just peace and quiet. We love it. Yeah, and with Welland Park, I mean, it actually has some buildings finished already. That Publix has been running for a year and a half, maybe two years now. And that's the most amazing Publix I've ever seen. Uh, well, how long does it take you to get there? Five minutes? Seven minutes. Seven minutes? Right now it's about seven minutes, but that's on the way to, right, with a couple of stoplights or a stop. Well, yeah, two stoplights, yeah. but on the way back it's a lot quicker. So seven minutes to Publix, which is also then, mm-hmm. you know, you've got little restaurants there and, uh, you know, just a bunch of little things that you'd have at any strip mall. Oh, yeah. The pizza's great. Irma's is great. The the sushi is great. Every Everything in there we like. Yeah, the Boca Lupa pizza is great. We like that. What kind of pizza? It's called Boca, Boca Lupa, but it's... It's Boca Lupo. I've Boca never had Lupo. it. Oh, yeah. it's good. It's it's good pizza. Okay. I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk more about water, boating, restaurants, that type of casual lifestyle that comes with having a home on a beautiful lot like this. 
we live close enough to this um, Tarpon Point restaurant right up the road. It used to be called the Mayak uh, Oyster Bar. It's in, under new hands, and I think it's greatly improved. they got a great menu, and it's close enough that we can kayak there, and we just love it. You can kayak there. You can, you can tie up your kayak. You can go get something to eat and kayak back. It's fun. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and then, of course, you can, uh, you know, if you have a motorboat or something, you want to go or kayak, if you want a really long kayak ride, you can go all the way up to Snook Haven. It's just a super fun place to go and eat. Downriver, um, down by the LG Mean Bridge, there's uh, restaurants there. And then uh, you can go out to, we took a boat one time across the top of Charlotte Harbor and went over to like Fisherman's Village over there. Oh, you went to Fisherman's Village from here. We go there all the time. We drive, but we, we, we love it out there. We had a long day of boating one day, and we decided to do that. Yeah, it depends on how comfortable you are on your boat, how long you want to spend on it. You can pretty much get anywhere. That's good stuff. And a lot of fun. Yeah, a whole lot of fun. And then as far as uh, kayaking and canoeing or really small boats, there's little, you know, creeks that wind off the river that we can follow forever. We lived out here for 21 years, and we're still finding new places to kayak. And it's, that's the great thing about having a kayak is that you can kind of slip up and down little areas and and uh there's one creek straight across river that if you follow it it goes all the way up to a lake and that's a super fun creek to go up to when, when we have people coming here and staying with us for the first time we take them there because it's a fun adventure that is a fun one i like in the spring winter and fall when the weather is just absolutely glorious to be able to get into the kayaks and to travel north and there's like a winding part of the river and then you get to the open part of the river and when you come around the islands and you head back towards the house in the evening, it is the most glorious sunset ever. And if you can just imagine you're in your kayak in the middle of the water and you have this panoramic view of just the sun setting from one direction, but the effects that it has on the clouds and the sky from every other direction. It's, it's just absolutely spectacular. And you've got some sunset pictures you're going to be sending me, right? So I can put those in, yes. in here? Yes. I've sent you some really good ones. Okay. And great. I think Mark yes. has too. And yeah. that same fish picture that's going to be in this video is also shows that sunset that you see in the evening. Yeah. You know, I mean, people are buying lifestyle more so than you know, just a, a functional place to live. Yeah. And I mean, this is an extremely functional place to live, but wow, what a whole lot of lifestyle to go along with it. Oh, yes. Who knows, by the end of this podcast, we may change our minds. So. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> First time I walked in your house, I was like, this is amazing. We are so particular and we have such high level of standards and that's why our house is the way it is. But we have found that there are some certain little things like when I think about the, the lights outside, all the can lights, they work, but they didn't all match exactly. And so those little things just are in the details. And it's amazing how you can live here for so long and it takes until you, you get ready to sell it to make those changes. But I think our high level of standards and just our love for this home and the care, and I, and I would say pride in the home, um, it's, it's, it's parents. Will we want to stay here? No, we're going to still list it. it. It's just a different time for us in our lives. For the last 22 years, this house, or 21 years, this house has served our needs and our family. And it's been amazing, but it's just a different time for us. And it's it's a little bit, um, it's good. It's absolutely good. It's, it's emotional to think about, but it's all good emotion. It's that term bittersweet. Yeah, right? exactly. Going on yeah. to cool new stuff, but you got to leave something to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We're on to a new fun journey. Oh, let's talk about the garage. A lot of times when people are, are looking for homes uh, of this size and this price point, they have car collections. So you do have uh, a lot of garage space here. I haven't exactly figured out how many cars you could get in there if you were so inclined. What do you think the max is? Depending on the size of the car, because some of the garages are a little smaller than the others, but you can get six cars in a garage here. It's, but it's going to, one garage, you're definitely going to need a smaller car. My mom used to drive a Kia Soul. It, par it was perfect. That little garage was perfect for her. Um, our friend that was here before her drove a little uh, Jeep. It was good for that. Now, I know the one bay you have is like tandem because you had a classic car up in there already. So yeah. are you including the tandem spaces in there as well? As one, yes, as that, that tandem space can fit two cars. So if you needed to get two cars, and we usually don't park 
a second car in there that we're using all the time because, you know, it would constantly be moving somebody else's car to get to it. Right. But for a collector, you know, right. somebody mm-hmm. who, right. you know. We had the 53 in there for a while that we were housing for our brother, my sister and her bro- and my sister and her husband. Well, and one thing I noticed about the garage under the main house here is besides being able to get all those cars in there, you have a lot of extra space. There's a lot a of space. A lot of extra space. And I will tell you, over the years, it has served to store a lot of people's stuff. But fortunately, all the stuff is just about gone, and now it's it's just a lot of space to be used for whatever somebody may want it. Yeah, and we, it's kind of like a blank canvas down there still, because we never actually turned it into anything. And we didn't, you know, when, when you get here, you'll see that the ceiling's not sheetrock, it's insulated, but that allows you to run additional plumbing or electric or anything that you want to do. We were actually going to move the wood shop over here, because I got the wood shop under the small house. But then, you know, one thing led to another, and we decided to sell. Yeah, so if somebody has a craft or something that they want to do in that space, that's there. If they want to set it up to work on their cars, there's plenty of room for large toolboxes down there and a workbench and all that kind of stuff. Plus spaces for bicycles and any other outdoor stuff you might want to store. The space is plentiful and really could accommodate just about anything anyone would want it for. Yeah, and we're if you notice, like a lot of houses that you go to, you go into the garage, and it might be a pretty big garage, and you can and you're lucky to find one outlet. And we have we made sure when we built this house and all of our garage and storage spaces, we have lots of outlets you're never short of you're never looking for an outlet or, or you never you know you don't have to use like a super long extension cord to vacuum the whole garage there's outlets every probably i don't know 12 15 feet 10 feet i mean they're it's convenient every wall's got one or two outlets on it and not only 110 but 220 um uh, yeah our wood shop so the house was wired with 300 amp service because we always knew we were going to have a wood shop here. now which house is this this was the first house. The property all together has 300 amp service because this, this house is just a sub panel off the main panel. And that's in the garage of the small house, the original house. And there's 300 amp service brought to that. And there is a bunch of 110 and a bunch of dedicated 220 outlets. So, you know, I've had planers, joiners, uh, big edge sanders, table saws all take that take 220, uh, dust collectors. And they all ran on separate circuits, so it's not like they're all sharing a one or two circuits. Tell me about the windows in the two houses. Uh, do you have hurricane shutters, or are they hurricane-rated windows? The, the big house has the PGT wind guard windows. The small house, we built that before. That was a known thing. It was before Hurricane Charlie we built a small house, so we just have standard windows there. Okay. Are, is there any hurricane like shutters on it or anything? No. Okay. There's only a total of three windows, and then we have some French doors and stuff that are on the porches. But no. I, okay. So, and shutters. if that's important to the next buyer, obviously you guys have lived here all this time without it. Um, yeah. Yeah, we've been through two major hurricanes and one tropical storm. We were through Hurricane Charlie. We went to Hurricane Irma, and then we had. Uh, uh, this last big tropical storm that brought up a lot of rain and water. So. Isaias? Isaias? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it doesn't sound like it'd be too big of a job to outfit that either with shutters or just put hurricane-rated windows in it. No, it, it wouldn't be. And we've never had an issue with the guest house. I will tell you, though, having the hurricane windows in the main house, the, the big house, is just awesome because when everybody else is getting prepared and they're covering their windows, you can actually keep them all open and watch the storm approach. It's just awesome. Yeah, and then just close them at the last minute if you need to, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I got that. Okay. Anything else that you feel like somebody may want to know? I like the central vacuum. Let's talk about that central vacuum you like so much. I like the central vacuum because I don't like standard vacuuming. And so we have four ports throughout the house. So three on the main floor. Oh, I guess maybe more. Well, there's one upstairs in the widow's watch, and then there's three on the main floor. So you don't have to carry a vacuum up to the widow's watch. You don't have to. All you have to do is is take the the part that you actually vacuum with, and it plugs in. It's so convenient. But in addition to that, we have what's called vac pans. There's one in the kitchen under the main sink, and then there's one in the bathroom on my side of the sink. And so you might say, what is that for? 
if you want to dust something up, you just kick the vac pan, it opens up and it sucks everything in. And so in the bathroom, it's very helpful because I have a lot of hair. And so when I'm blow drying You've had out a lot of hair, hair since I've known you. <laughs> yeah. When you blow dry out your hair, it just, it falls on the floor. And so it's so convenient just to hit the vac pan and it sucks up all the hair that's on the floor and you don't have to worry about oh, that's it. That's awesome. Yeah, I think so. So how come I'm always finding all sorts of hair on the floor? Because maybe I just don't <laughs> clean up after it as much as I should. But when you're ready, it's there for you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about some other stuff that that's, would be more important to you. Like you mentioned earlier, how much you love to cook and spend I time do. in the kitchen. Tell us about your kitchen. What do you love about your kitchen? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So when we were building the house, it was really important for me because we have so many large gatherings, whether family or friends, that when you have a lot of people in the kitchen... It's functional. And so I have double wolf ovens and then I have wolf stove tops and I position them in such a way in the island. So that way two of them are on one side of the island, two are on the other side of the island. And it was strategic so that when, when people are cooking, you're not all over each other trying to get to the same place. And then we have a sub Z refrigerator, which I just absolutely love that refrigerator. I think it just takes care of my products inside of it very, very well. And it's just been an amazing refrigerator. Plus, I like the style and design. And then we have, as far as the dishwasher, we have the Fisher Paquel, which isn't a normal dishwasher in the sense that it has two drawers. And it's convenient, especially now with just the two of us, that you can just wash one drawer at a time and you're not having to worry about using too much water or not having enough or waiting too long or whatever. It's just been, it's just been amazing. All right. And t talk to me about the water quality at this house. We have amazing water. We didn't always when we first learned, but Mark will talk to you more about the water because it's, it's complex, but amazing. Yeah. Out here, the, we, because we're on the river and it is close enough to the Gulf of Mexico that it's saltier during the winter. And we found out very quickly we needed a whole house RO system. So the first system we had probably lasted 16 years, maybe. We just a couple years ago had a brand new system put in. It's about a $10,000 system. And every faucet and spigot in the entire two houses has reverse osmosis water. So it's great drinking water. It's probably better than what you can buy bottled water. And it's great for anything taking showers in, washing your cars. So we don't have a water bill. We're not on city water, but. We do pay for monthly service to come and look at it, check the filters. There's multiple filters and pumps, but it's the best water we'll probably ever have in our lives. Most people are just happy to get a two-gallon RO tank under their kitchen sink so they can at least drink that water. But you guys are bathing in it. You're washing your clothes in right. it. Definitely the best water that I've heard of is the RO systems. It's an amazing system. And I'll tell you, when the hurricanes, when you, we hear about a hurricane coming, everybody's running out and getting water, 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 water. And I quickly realized I don't have to do that. I just have to package my own water right here from the house and be prepared. So we're not running out looking for water. We have water that's better than you can get at the store. And we just take care of it yeah, ourselves. If, if the power goes down at that point, you don't have a pump to pump the water into the house. We, we have generator hookups. So we have two panels out there where the power comes in um, from FPNL, and we have generator hookups. So we can, you can, you know, hook your generator. It's the plugs, and you have the big bypass switch so you don't, so it doesn't send power back out, you know, to the right. power. Right. So it's not lines. a generac that's like hard mounted, but, no. right. you know, I mean, that's what I have in my house. I've got a nice generator that runs on either propane or gasoline, and I can plug it into my wall. Uh, yep. but, but you've got that for both houses here? We have one generator, but we have plugs for both houses. Okay. So if we wanted to go out and get a bigger generator, what we would do really is realistically, we don't need everything in the house running at the same time. So we would just power down all the switches, keep the refrigerators running, and we can run the water system if needed. There is a 500-gallon holding tank. So it takes a while to get through 500 gallons of water. So if that holding tank is anywhere near full, which it almost always is, and we lose power. We don't have to worry about running the generator to pump the water out of the ground and through the entire system, which is quite a process. We can just live off that 500 gallons. Yeah, that does seem like a large amount of water. It's a lot. Yeah. Of all the places in, in the world that you could be, why are you in Venice? Well, I was born in New York into a big Italian family. And when my grandparents moved to Florida, the family moved to Florida, Northport specifically. And 
lived in Northport until I met Mark. Then we went to Fort Benning, Georgia when he was in the military. And we just always knew we would come back to Venice just because it's so beautiful here. There's just no other place like it for us that we'd want to be. Plus, our family is local. So that helps as well. So you've been in a few places. I have been in a couple of places. Mark has been all over the world. We have. I mean, I've been, you know, when I left for the Army, I didn't know where we would end up. But once I got a good idea of what other towns and cities were like, and um, especially growing up in Florida, because I was originally built, born outside of Chicago, but my parents moved here when I was about two years old. So When you say here, what part of here? Uh, they moved to Brandon first, and then I, I, they came to Venice when I was eight. Okay. So, so you went to Venice schools and... Yep. We, went to, we actually, Deborah and I, met at Garden Elementary. So were you ever here when, when they used to, like, the train would come in? Yep. And, and the circus performers and elephants, the elephants and everything would and go march across go over the, bridge. the circus bridge? That was really neat. Yeah, we were there for that. Yeah, we, I remember those days when I was a kid. I remember yeah. those train tracks going right across 41 there. Um, yeah, see, I wasn't here for that. And uh, I feel ripped off. Yeah. Yeah, although I do watch The Greatest Show on Earth with Charlton Heston and Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. And that, that was recorded in Sarasota County at the old. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, before they moved the circus building to the island in 58. In 56, they filmed that movie uh, where Robarts is now. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, Venice is just really neat. There's so much that's going on, whether it's the Italian feast or there's some kind of an art show. There's always something that's going on that's fun and interesting. And needless to say, it's really low crime here. Yeah, when I put in our zip code, 34293, uh, on my website, there's a Market Insider tab, which I don't feed it the information. It comes from national statistics and whatnot. But it shows us being so far below the average crime rate across the country. And it's one of the safest zip codes anywhere in the area that I serve is right here in 34293. Yeah, so I for the listener, that. go to my resources tab at stevemartinhomes.com. Go down to Market Insider and then punch in 34293 and you'll see what I'm talking about. Then punch in some other zip codes. Um, It it only serves services the area that I cover, which is a lot of Florida. Um, So if you're like looking for Detroit or New York, you're not going to find those stats there. But I'm from Detroit and I can just tell you it's a whole lot safer here. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, and and that's one of the reasons why we came back from the Army back to here. Not only because we had our family here and stuff, it was just we realized what a nice place we grew up in, and why not go back? And once we built this house out here, especially even the little house, just because of the environment that we live in out here, it just became the natural stage for all of our Christmas gatherings and our Thanksgiving gatherings. Of course, when we built this bigger house, it made it a lot easier, but everybody wanted to come out here because you got the nice view, you feel like you're in the country, and it's just sort of uh, sets the stage for those kind of gatherings. I remember when we were in Fort Benning, just thinking about Venice in comparison to some other cities. I remember we were in Fort Benning, Columbus. The first time we arrived and started traveling around, I thought, this is not Venice. It is not modern. It doesn't have the same feel. And even now as I travel to, whether it be Fort Myers or Tampa, there's just a different feel about Venice, the modernization, and just, it's, I just like it so much. Well, we're going to wrap up now. But, Deborah, what would you say to the people that are buying your house that you have lived in for the last 21 years? I would say I hope that you enjoy it as much as we have. It's been such a blessing in our lives, and we hope that it would be the same for you. Mark, any final words? I would have to say enjoy the view every single morning like we have. Don't let it get old, and I hope you like the fish. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm sure this is going to be a great podcast, and people are going to get a lot, a lot of uh, good information out of this.